Hi guys, welcome to another episode of uh, MrLopezClasses.com. This is the chapter A of our diesel engine class. In this chapter, we are going to talk about the plane bearings. Where are located? What type of plane bearings are commonly used in a typical diesel engines? And uh, what is the procedure to check the tolerance in between the bearings and, uh, and the metals? We are going to use the technique of the plastic gauge. Okay, my friends, the bearings. You remember in previous episodes, I mentioned that uh, depending on the quality of the bearings is uh, the life of the engine. In other words, when the, when the, when the soft metal, remember that the bearings, uh, the bearings they have, they, they are composed by uh, uh, a piece of steel covered with uh, two layers. The, the first one norma normally is uh, copper and the last one is babbit. It's a special alloy. The other name of this alloy is a soft alloy or white metal. Uh, it's soft because the content of lead. The advantage of that of this alloy is that uh, with, with high temperatures, uh, the metal tries to become liquid and work like a lubricant in between, in between the bearings and the metal. When, when, when the soft metal, when the, when the white metal is gone, is completely deteriorated and uh, the play in between the bearing the play in between the bearing and the crankshaft increase and uh, you have a uh, you remember the code of uh, knocking and you have low oil pressure if you have low oil pressure immediately the performance of the engine goes down this is a uh, this is the indication uh, if you have low oil pressure in a, a couple of minutes you have a low compression and immediately high temperature and suddenly the engine lose all all the, the, the properties for that reason it's very very important check all the time the oil pressure gauge the oil pressure gauge in your engine indicate the condition of the bearings the oil pressure gauge indicate the condition of the bearings and also, it's important when you do the service in a diesel engine, take a sample of oil and send to the laboratory in order to investigate, in order to investigate if, if, if uh, the bearings are deteriorated. How can you determine if uh, the bearings are deteriorated? Yes, because you have a high content of, uh, of lead, a high content of zinc, high content of tin, high content of copper, those are indicators that uh, the, the soft metal is, uh, is gone and, uh, and, and the bearings are damaged. Other good indicator, simple indicator is the oil pressure on the engine. Okay, the, the, the life of the engine depends on the condition of the bearings. This is very, very important. In this area, in this area, in between the crankshaft and the, and the bearing, the, f the film of oil with high pressure is produced. In that, in that surface is produced the maximum pressure. This is the pressure that you read on the pressure gauge is the pressure created here. For that reason, it's important verify the thickness of those bearings and, uh, and, and verify if those bearings are appropriate uh, for, uh, for uh, the crankshaft or for the camshaft uh, we are going to check right now where are located uh, the most important plane bearings in a typical diesel engine. For that reason, I want to share uh, with yours uh, the following video that um, that we are going to 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 see right now on the screen. Okay, those are those are the plane bearings. This is a, a radial bearing located on the crump pin or rod pin. That bearing support the, the explosion of the piston. The other plane bearing. Uh, is the bearing of the main journals, radial and axial. In this particular case, this is double function. There are other ones individual, like the, 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 the bearing that you have uh, on the screen right now for, for the axial load, okay? Uh, those are the main bearings for, for, uh, for main journals. And now we have other additional bearings for the cam chaff. Those are the, the plain bearings located on the journals uh, where uh, the cam chaff is uh, located. Those are plain bearings. You can see in, in this picture, in this picture, this is the bearing 
and this is a, a bearing with a with a babbit in the surface and this is the drill this is the hole where the oil is circulating this oil remember that the crankshaft is hollow my friend don't forget the crankshaft is hollow let me refresh how many uh, elements inside of uh, of the of the diesel engines are hollow what is the meaning of that that the oil circulate internally okay one element is the crankshaft one element is the crankshaft the crankshaft uh, uh, have a, a special cavities like the picture that you have on the screen right now those cavities uh, uh, allow uh, the flow of uh, oil at high pressure coming from the oil pump okay the crankshaft is one of those elements what other element is hollow yes the push rods the push rods the push rods uh, connected in between the uh, lifter and the rocker arms the push rods are hollows uh, in in uh, in some diesel engines uh, the connecting rod the connecting rod is hollow yeah uh, what other element is hollow that uh, allow the pass of, uh, of oil uh, connecting rods crankshaft and the block the block have a lot of uh, cavities passages where the oil is circulating at high pressure okay don't forget is this is very important yes in in this particular case in in, in our video you can verify that all the parts of uh, of, of of the crankshaft are uh, are completely free look at this hole the hole located located in the main journal in the main journal that hole passed through the other side and keep lubricated the main bearing the main bearing on the on the on the main journals that hole that hole match exactly exactly with this channel with this groove on the on the on the bearings yeah this is very very important let me exactly this is the hole and that hole is communicated yeah with the other holes on the crankshaft all the holes and those holes the oil circulate internally and keep lubricated keep lubricated the bearings and keep the pressure on the bearings according with the manufacturer recommendation if the pressure decreased the manufacturer recommendation uh, you have problems and uh, immediately there are a lot of uh, codes on the computer on the display uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the console yeah this is the the procedure to verify that those holes are free and those are the holes coming coming from the oil pump with high pressure with oil at high pressure other 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 plane bearing okay we have a in the connecting rod we have two plane bearings one in the bottom in the big hole and other on top on the small hole the top one is not in is not in babbit is in bronze it's an special bronze with high level of phosphorus it's an special bronze with high level of phosphorus those bearings are exactly the same bearings that the, the bearing that you have in the shaft of the turbocharger we are going to study later and those bearings are similar to the bearing that you have in the shaft of the star motor bronze bearings with high content of phosphorus for that reason in the future when we take a, a, the, the oil sample we are going to analyze we, if we found that high level of phosphorus one possibility is is the plain bearings on the pin of the pistons or the plane bearings on the turbo or the plane bearings on the star motor but the, the star motor is not connected with the oil of the engine for that reason this is not this is not part of the consideration okay let me check the procedure to remove the pin the procedure to remove the pin on the piston we are going to study later in the next chapter the pistons and that's the procedure and uh, in this part of the of the of the piston uh, uh, is in contact lock with this with this special special uh, plane bearing in bronze it's an special bronze for high load because this this uh, plane bearing support the maximum radial load because here in in the center of this uh, plane bearing is supported the explosion on the head of the piston those bearings are special special bearings for high high radial loads 
the material is similar to the material used on the bearings uh, for the turbocharger we are going to study later. It's a special bronze with high level of phosphorus, right? This is an, and, and on top, if you check here, is the hole, is the hole for the lubrication. Yeah, we are going to put in back the piston quickly, and we introduce the pin carefully, 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 until the pin reach the other side. Okay, we are going to study in the next episode the pistons and, and the, the procedure to disassemble the piston. Okay, my friends, those are the most important uh, plane bearings that uh, we are going to use. Remember, if, uh, if the plane bearings are uh, not, uh, not properly lubricated, what happens if the plane bearings are not properly lubricated? The plane bearings are, uh, the, the soft metal is gone immediately and you have a knock sensor activated and you have low oil pressure immediately. All right, for, th for that reason, the life of the engine depends on the condition of the bearings and the condition of the bearings depend on the quality of the oil. In chapter number 10, we are going to talk about the different type of oils and how to keep the engine running in perfect condition for a long period of time. It's simple. Only try to keep the engine and the oil as clean as possible. If the oil is clean, you have engine for, for years and years. Try to keep the, the oil as clean as possible and try to use the oil recommended by the manufacturer. This is other important recommendation. The people think that, that the most expensive oil is, is, is better, not necessary. Depend of the engine, depend of the, 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 the year of uh, uh, fabrication and depend of the recommendation of the manufacturer. This is the most important part. If that engine is recommended for uh, uh, mineral oil, uh, use mineral oil. If that engine is, 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 is recommended only for uh, full synthetic, use full synthetic. But follow the recommendation of the manufacturer. We are going to talk later about the qualities of the oil. All right? The life of the engine depends on uh, the quality of the oil, the quality of the bearings, and the performance of the diesel engine. The performance of the, of the diesel engine depends on the compression. If the compression is good, the compression in the combustion chamber is other vital, vital factor. Okay, my friend, right now we are going to talk about the procedure to do, to test if uh, the bearings that I select are appropriated for uh, my crankshaft or for my camshaft, and uh, if uh, those bearings uh, are according with the tolerance recommended by the manufacturer in the service manual. Once again, the million dollar question. You have the service manual in your hand? No. Don't try to continue with the reparation. If you don't have the service manual, it's impossible to replace bearings because you need to verify what is the tolerance recommended, uh, uh, what is the play recommended uh, for this particular uh, 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 engine, for this particular crankshaft, for those particular uh, bearings. Okay? Service manual. Service manual is the most important element in, 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 in all the reparation, in all the steps for diesel engines. Okay, diesel and gasoline is, is the same. Okay, we are going to check right now the procedure, uh, the procedure to check the plastic gauge. There are basically three types of, uh, what, is the, what is the plastic gauge? The plastic gauge procedure is, is simple. I am going to open, I am, for example, this is the journal, this is the main journal. I am going to remove the cap of the journal and I am going to locate a piece of plastic is a filament of plastic uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on the crankshaft and I am going to put in back the cap and I am going to compress the cap according with the torque recommended by the manufacturer. After that, I am going to remove the cap and I am going to verify how much was the deformation of the plastic. And according with the thickness of that deformation, I know how much is the tolerance on the bearings. It's simple. All right, we are going to use three types. The most common are three types of filaments. Uh, the filaments uh, of red color, plastic, uh, green color, or blue color, like uh, the, the, the filament that we have on the screen right now. Okay, those are the filaments. The red one, the blue one. Okay, the blue ones, those are the tolerance. The tolerance, I have the tolerance uh, on the screen. And this is the red one with, with the tolerance recommended 
per each one. What is the meaning of that? You need verify in the service manual, in the service manual, like uh, the service manual that you have on the screen right now, how much is the tolerance recommended for that particular engine? How much is the play recommended? The maximum play. Ah, according with the maximum play, you select you select the, pl the plastic gauge red or blue or green. And right now, you do the process, the process that I am going to explain right now on the video. It's a simple process. Okay, I have the three, the three, the three uh, uh, plastic elements, and now I am ready to start with the procedure to verify. In this particular case, in this particular case, let me let me show to you quickly. In this particular case, this is the clearance recommended for this engine. Uh, in this case, is in between 0 0.002 and 0 0.004 inches. In the example that uh, that uh, we are going to solve it right now, uh, the book, the, the service manual for that engine recommend uh, a tolerance around 0 0.0025. For that reason, we are going to use the green, the green uh, filament, the plastic gauge color green and we are going to apply the torque recommended by the manufacturer in main journals and <clears throat> in crampings, in both of them. And we are going to check if the deformation is according with the manual. If the deformation is good, those are the bearings recommended. Suppose that uh, the deformation is bigger, the deformation of the plastic, when, when I compress the plastic. What is the meaning of that? If the deformation is bigger than the recommended, Ah, those bearings are too close, too big, too thick. I need order bearings a little thinner. All right. What happens if when I apply the torque, the deformation is practically nothing? It's too much play. I need thicker bearings. Remember that uh, you replace the bearings a standard plus 10, plus 20, or plus 40. Really, really, it's not plus 10, it's plus 0 0.001, plus 20 is plus 0 0.002 or 0 0.004, all right? You can order the bearings in those four dimensions. The bearings are according, according with the recommendation of the matching shop. You remember the procedure when you send the matching shop, the, the crunch up to the matching shop, they return the, the crunch up properly polished, and they say, right now, you need use with the crunch up uh, bearings plus, zero, uh, plus 20 or plus 40, that they recommend. When you order the bearings, you put the bearings, and before you, you assemble the engine, I recommend check with plastic gauge if those bearings are according with the tolerance accepted or recommended for the manufacturer. If the tolerance is not according, you need order other bearings oversized or undersized, depending. Okay, that's clear? Always, when you receive the bearings, check with the plastic gauge if the bearings have the tolerance appropriate. Believe me, I have a lot of experience with that because you finish, you assemble the engine, you finish the engine, you start the engine, and uh, three weeks later, the customer called to you, oh, the pressure is low. The pressure is below 40, is 20, 25. And you need disassembly the engine completely to replace the bearings because the bearings have too much play, too much tolerance. For that reason, I recommend always, always, before you assembly the engine, check the tolerance, check the manual, and apply the plastic gauge and verify if the tolerance is according with the recommendation of the manufacturer. All right, we are going to continue with our video. In, okay, and now we are going to remove the bearings. We are going to clean the bearing. Don't touch with your fingers the bobbit. Try to avoid touch with your fingers the bobbit. Okay, and right now we are going to cut it on a small filament of a, of a plastic gauge. And a small filament, I have one a small filament cut it, pre cut it. And uh, I am going to put that a small piece of plastic uh, on the on the journal on the main journal all right this is the procedure I, I put the plastic on the journal and right now I am going to put it back the cap 
the cap in the position appropriated and I am going to torque never never try to rotate the crunch up don't move the crunch up and I am going to apply the torque recommended by the manufacturer okay with the wrench and uh, with the socket I I approximate the nuts and now with the with the with the torque wrench I apply the torque recommended Normally, I apply the torque in two steps. If, in, like in this case, it's 60 psi, I go with the 40, and after that with 60. This is 40, 40, and 40 in both in both nuts. And after that, I adjust to 60, and I apply the force, the torque appropriate, 60 and 60. And now. I am ready to remove the cap again and verify how much was the deformation of the plastic gauge in that particular journal. We are going to verify. Uh, we have a piece of paper with the with the uh, the color of the deformations, and uh, we are going to verify if we are in the in the range of deformation. This is this is the deformation of okay, and we are going to cut it, the piece of paper. If you see on the piece of paper, there are different bands with colors according with the deformation. Okay, this the our deformation match with this one, and this one in particular is 0 0.002. This is perfect because it's according with the recommendation of the manufacturer. We are in the range. We are we are okay. The deformation is okay. Those bearings are perfect, and those bearings can be installed right now. And we are going to do the same on the crampin. We are going to apply the plastic. We are going to put in back the cap and we are going to apply the torque recommended by the manufacturer. Exactly the same torque. Uh, that, that torque is a little less. This is 45. And we are going to apply the torque appropriate. Uh, and after that, yeah, we adjust uh, the, the torque wrench. We apply the torque and now we are ready to remove, to remove the nuts and remove uh, the cap of the connecting rod and verify how much was the deformation. In this particular case, once again, the deformation of, uh, of the plastic uh, is exactly, exactly in this, the same like the recommended by the manufacturer. Both bearings are in perfect condition. Okay, guys, this is the procedure to verify if the bearings are in good conditions. It's simple. That's the procedure of uh, the plastic gauge. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is a very useful video for yours in the future. Uh, when you try to repair any type of engine, gas or diesel, uh, check, check the bearings before you assemble the engine again. Thank you.